Hi. Hello. Or as some Australians say, g'day. Cathar Love 89. The Cathars and Sex. Or Catharism and their viewpoint and its viewpoint as a philosophy on sex, sexuality. Well, even the medieval Cathars didn't take too much notice of it at all. It was certainly a big thing to the Catholic Church. You can't commit adultery, you can't have sex before you're married, you can't have you can't have sex with another man, wife or whatever, after marriage. Uh, one needed to get married. Uh, and of course as the church and its procreation, you, you can't uh, you can't have use a condom or anything else that'll step that'll stop uh, the semen flowing through to the woman, the natural process. Look, this is all a foreign language to the Cathars. The Cathars, uh, it was a non-event. <coughs> Even as Henri said, treat it as though you're plucking an apple or an orange from the tree, enjoy and move on. <coughs> Excuse me. So, whether you're heterosexual, bisexual, transsexual, homosexual, it's not an issue with the Cathars. What, what the Cathars took issue with was the quality of your love and your relationships. And not just with people, with the environment, real tree huggers, the Cathars, with the flora and the fauna, animals, because they also had a divine spark. And in fact, everything animate and inanimate, that means rocks, that was created by the source at the beginning, <clears throat> everything has a divine spark. And therefore, everything needs to be respected. Buddhists, in that respect, so sex and all its variations, its facets, its multi <coughs> multi varied tapestry was just a part of human nature. Uh, as is dancing and singing, having a gamble. All is just part of living. It's part of the enjoyment of living. And it's all fine, provided you're not doing anything such an, it, it, that is obsessive to the degree that it actually hurts yourself or anyone else. So, quite apart from anything else, just for this for this reason alone, the people loved the Cathars. Now, the Cathars had a bit of a down on getting pregnant. So, <laughs> you know, they were okay with having sex, but they weren't so okay with having babies. And the reason for this was that the world was a pretty, the Cathar world in the medieval times from 1,000 to 1,200 to 1,300 was a pretty horrible place. There were wars, people were fighting each other, cutting each other's throats, there was vendettas, there was wars between lords and knights, kings, uh, the church, uh, they had their own generals, the church were grabbing what they could, there were ties, there were taxes, uh, it was a pretty horrible place and apart from that it wasn't a very nice place as well, it stunk. Uh, and 
the Cathars then and even the Cathar philosophy today, uh, which is a philosophy, not a religion. It concentrates on the individual. It's about you. It's about me, he, she and him. It's about us who are alive and kicking. About us, what we are doing spiritually, mystically, how we, what how we are dealing with our uh, ourselves and our environment, our spiritual life and our physical life, our health, and that's our mystic health as well as our physical health. So, yeah, there's not much there's not much value in having a an amazing mind and an amazing intelligence if you've got a pretty horrible body which is diseased with chronic ills and so forth because of the, the crap and the rubbish and the junk that one's eating and one's lifestyle uh, so there's not much point uh, having a great brain if you've got a lousy body to carry it around with you so the Cathars were into health and into healing uh, you know, they have been known and it has been said that they were a death cult because of the way when they were burned, and my mom, 400, uh, not so good, uh, 200, uh, 220, whatever it was, uh, and all these different places, how they actually walked onto the flames and they did not even scream. Now, uh, and that's, that's remarked not by the Cathars, but the, the enemy of the Cathars, the Catholic Church, and this is chronicled in writing over and over and over again by their enemies. In fact, uh, one uh, one uh, person said, why don't, why don't you tie them up? They'll escape. And the person said, no, they won't escape. He said, they'll, they'll, they'll brush the flames when it's ready. Now, the thing was, the Cathars were into dying. They had hospitals. They had... Uh, they had uh, uh, they went around treating people, helping people. Uh, they were into herbs and healing. They're very, very big with that. And they used their hands and uh, all forms to affect healings. So they were into health. But once they walk, that, that they were caught, that they were surrounded, that they were cut off, and there was no escape, then they went to death with serenity. Now that's a big difference from being a death cult when it's time to die and you know there's no escape that you die with serenity, with tranquility. You have a good death. <clears throat> so the Cathars there are many, there is there is much uh, misinformation, disinformation. Although there are book every year there is a couple of books about the Cathars, but these are people who have studied on the Cathars, studied up on the Cathars, and are writing historically about the Cathars. But there's very little books that talk about the spiritual or the mystical side of Catharism. And that is its major component. This was a component, this deep mystical and uh, spiritual component with, which brings its own form of tranquility, which has allowed them to go to the death. They knew that they'd been here before. They knew that were reincarnation. Now many, not all, wanted to step off that wheel of reincarnation as, the, as do the Buddhists, many Buddhists. But there are other Cathars who said, no, we will return as long to return to earth to uh, bring about uh, Catharism and its success or its continuity. Hence this resurgence, uh, this group reincarnations, and it's happening all in various parts of the world. <coughs> so this is what is happening at the moment. Now because of this, this, this sexual side or, or the uh, uh, 
well, there's no, there's no problem from the sexual side of, of, of cathars. You can fall in love and you, you can have your relationships and, and whatever they happen to be, as long as they're, they're not hurting you, uh, you you're not, uh, you're not uh, going against the law of the land or whatever and getting into trouble. But it's the quality of your love and the quality and depth and richness of your relationship, which is the main thing. Uh, and really, this cathar... Not, not in abhorrence of children. They, they, Cathars had children, and they loved their children. And, uh, and you. But once the person's in the world, into this world, you are there to help them and assist them. But they said, really, it's better not to bring children into the world because the world's a pretty nasty place. And also, when it's all said and done, you are, we are. No matter how great a parent we are, we're limited as to what we can do with our children. They're on their own, ultimately. Uh, and in fact, you know, we're all on our own, whether, whether we like it or not. Uh, and as close as we have with our relationship, we are still on our own. Now, that's in this physical sense. We are not on our own as far as our guide is concerned. We all have, certainly, one spirit guide. Sometimes there are others helping us, and certainly if we have friends that died, they're doing their best to give us a hand as well. So, uh, as Henri de Boer said, Cathar Perfecti, that one's sexuality and degree, and one's degree of libido, or whatever it happens to be, that in no way inhibits one spiritual or mystical journey. It's part of living. Now, some people are, are more horny, more sexed up than others. Uh, but some is, <laughs> I know, uh, when I was young and I, I headed off to Japan and uh, and I was uh, in my teens when I was there. And uh, anyhow, later on, I spoke to a couple of veterans and one, one, one friend of mine, he's now dead, Bill, and uh, both these two that I'm talking to, they're both dead now. And Bill Mead said, oh, no, he said, I, I was engaged. He said, oh, I never went with any of the Japanese girls. So I said, oh, OK, OK. But then my friend Jim, who, Julian, uh, he's the guy who had the dialogues with, uh, with Henri. And, and he said, no, no, no. He said, I was a good Catholic. He said, I never went with any of the, the Japanese girls. And I said, don't worry about it, mate. I said, I went with enough of them to, to suit the two of you. So uh, I enjoyed myself in Japan uh, in a sexual way. And I learned a lot. And uh, I was a very avid teenage student, believe me. So, uh, I'm, I'm pleased to say that it didn't get in the road of my, of my ultimate Cathar journey. So, so this is, is a good sign. Now, the other thing is that I find that all religions, this puts Catharism quite apart because uh, the Catholics, they got a hang up regard sex and the hum human body. I mean, they got flagellants who whip themselves and so forth. Uh, on in the board said, you know, the body, the body is always innocent. Our, our sexual feelings, our feelings for going out and dancing and enjoying ourselves, these are natural feelings. Yeah, you know, the, the body is always, always innocent. If there's any any culprit, it would be the mind. But he said, why do we punish our innocent bodies? Uh, and the Muslims, I mean, they they got these burqas on so nobody can see their body and see who they are. I mean, uh, the the Jews, and uh, uh, look, it doesn't matter which religion. I shouldn't be even saying the, the, the Christians or the Jews or this and that, because it's, it's all religions. They got a, the, the Buddhists, I mean, the Buddhist monk, I mean, they got little kids from 10 and 12, and they, sex is just it. Bye bye, mate. That's it. You know, you just got to sub sublimate these different things. So, Sex is a really big deal to them. And, you know, you're very naughty if you do various things that they tell you you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be doing. Well, with Catharism, it's the dead opposite. Sure, you know, uh, you have to be careful. Uh, there's some pretty terrible uh, venereal diseases floating around out there. So it's a minefield in itself. As to being a homosexual, heterosexual, bisexual, 
whatever these things, whatever your bag is from a sexual point of view, which most of us are born to anyway, it's not an issue from the Cathar point of view. And I, I, think that's, I think that's a good thing because <laughs> our sexual problems is one of the things probably uh, between religion and, 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 and sex, uh, if, if we didn't have a problem with either of them, we certainly probably wouldn't have psychiatrists. So it's, it, it is a big deal from the point of view of your relationship with your partner and your, the quality and the richness uh, of your relationship with your partner, the depth of your love, the d degree of your love. This is what Catharism is about. And it's about, it's about, and also it's about the depth and quality of your love for yourself. This is the importance from the Cathar point of view. Not the sex itself is a non-issue, non -issue, whereas to the major religions of the world, God hates faggots or whatever it happens to be, you're a homosexual, you're gone. Uh, so, and to the, to the other, uh, to the Abrahamic faiths. So, with the Cathars, it just doesn't come into it. It's not in the equation at all. So I think that's a very healthy sign and a good sign for the future. And this business of not having children, well, anyone who, I, I believe sincerely that if we, we really don't do something about the population, and we can by bringing education, uh, when we find we bring education, jobs, uh, better living conditions to people who are poor, we find automatically the, the, uh, the, uh, the birth rate goes down. So as our standard of living and our standard of education and our, uh, as we get more into technology and so forth, it's, it's, uh, which happened in, in certainly in Bangladesh, which were having 10 and 12 children and uh, per family was a, an amazing rate and now it's gone right down, the, the birth rate has gone down in the cities, not so much in the country, because of the, the, uh, the quality of life that has gone in and the quality of living. And as that comes up, then the birth rate goes down. So there's a solution there. So if we can help the poor and the uh, the poor and the uneducated of the world to have a richer lifestyle and gain more education, that in itself reduces the birth rate because we certainly need to do that. Okay, bye for now. Talk to you again.